Hi, welcome to the DevOps Lab. In today's DevOps world, security is not just something security teams need to think about. It is every engineer's responsibility. And this is especially true with all the REST APIs we write. On this episode of DevOps Lab, we have a very special guest, Dmitry Sotnikov of 42Crunch, who will talk to us about REST API security. Hey, Dimitri, how's it going? And welcome to the show. Hey, hey, well, good to be here. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself and about 42Crunch. Cool. So um, my name is uh, Dmitry Sotnikov, uh, working and live in California. Uh, 42 Crunch is an API security company. Uh, we are about three years old at the moment. Uh, uh, we are uh, pretty spread and international. We have uh, offices here in California. We have uh, a pretty big dev offices in Europe, uh, in Dublin, Ireland, and in Montpellier, France. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, REST API security is what we do. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about REST API security. Yeah, so REST APIs are interesting, right? So REST APIs emerged out of people basically hacking their way into making APIs very simple, right? We, we had the, uh, the SOAP APIs very structured. We had the whole WS star uh, stack that uh, Microsoft and IBM created, yeah. very organized, very secure, very uh, defined. But people wanted something simple, and then they basically hacked uh, their browsers and the, the, the regular HTTP stack into doing very simple APIs, doing the same verbs get, post, uh, et cetera, sending some JSON, getting some data back and, uh, back, and it was so simple that people started using it. Mm -hmm. and, and then the whole cloud native architectures happened uh, and people started not just having some sort of uh, app and, and a browser, but they started using some third party services and they started using clouds to store stuff. Uh, and they started uh, having a rich single page applications, using and APIs and, and mobile uh, yeah. and IoT and devices and all of those guys have started using APIs and then microservices happened and, yes. and Kubernetes. And now your classes became microservices, became APIs, and now any application has whatever, hundreds of APIs. And, and, and basically, if you look at the stats now, uh, mm -hmm. I think ECMI is doing their state of the internet report once a year. Yeah. And last year, I think, 88% of all internet traffic, they reported being actually REST API traffic, API wow. traffic. So yeah, so APIs just happened and, and then now everywhere and they are, they are your, your application surface. It's no longer UI, it's, it's APIs. It's everything now. And well, we have to think about security in today's world, right? So how does security pertain to REST APIs? So APIs basically became your security surface. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, things have been relatively easy from security perspective. You had your defined edge, and your mm -hmm. edge was basically your, your network, which uh, your security people could control, your IT people could control your network and, and your network edge, and then your UI, right? So basically, mm -hmm. you, you had... You worked on securing your UI, you worked on securing your edge, and uh, every time you updated your app, uh, your deployment, which again in Good the old waterfall days were not, uh, was not too, too often, uh, yeah. you, you could have your security to review your changes and, and, and make them happen. Uh, and then the whole agile and, and DevOps and, and microservices happened. And now you have your proverbial two pizza teams working each on, on their own microservice and, and trying to ship their updates quickly and, and frequently. And, and basically with the hundreds of microservices, hundreds of APIs and, and each and every team trying to be agile, you're getting changes just happen. Just every day, every hour, there's, there's some kind of change happening. And, yeah. and there's no longer an edge, right? Because they all talk APIs to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and so security became really challenging. And it's, it's very hard. It, it is basically impossible to do that with some sort of manual rules and manual reviews. And uh, it's just 
It's just not practical. Frankly, developers outnumber security people, application security people, by a very large ratio. That's uh, right. And so it, it, it has to be automated and, and uh, it, it has to be a part of DevOps. DevOps has to be, become part of DevSecOps. And it's just uh, security has to be everywhere. And the API security is, is a huge part of it because your edge is mostly API. So how does 42 Crunch, how can 42 Crunch help us? Yeah, so 42 Crunch again, so we are, uh, because of what I've said, uh, we treat API security problem as not just runtime problem, but DevSecOps problem. So mm -hmm. we have our platform that spans API design, API development, API test and security testing, and runtime protection. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that we integrate our components, our platform, into the products uh, and, and systems that developers already use. Mm -hmm. So be it IDEs, uh, DevOps pipelines, uh, their deployments, their Kubernetes deployment, their Azure deployment, etc. That sounds really interesting. Could you show us? Yes. Okay, so let's go to the screen. Uh, here's my uh, Visual Studio Code, my IDE. I have a project to which I've just added an API. And it's a regular open API file, right? It can be uh, YAML, can be JSON. And open API specification is a specification to define REST APIs. Uh, it's an industry standard. Uh, there's a whole uh, Linux Foundation initiative and Microsoft. And N42 Crutch actually part of that initiative. Mm -hmm. And so I have my, my API, uh, and it defines just the paths and uh, the operations and responses, etc. Sure. So how do I know uh, that, it's, uh, that it's secure, that it follows the security best practices? Well, I have the 42 Crunch uh, plugin extension installed. And it gives me some uh, capabilities to edit the API and to navigate it and, and gives me uh, IntelliSense, etc. But from security perspective, most importantly, it allows me to do security audit so I can click that button. And then it, it goes, uh, it, it sends uh, that information about the, the API, that it's, um, uh, its contract uh, to the cloud, to foot to crunch. And it sends me back a detailed security report. So it gives me the overall security score. It um, analyzes the way I've defined security and the way I'm doing data validation, et cetera. And it also outputs all of these issues to the, um, uh, to the problems panel. So I can easily just go uh, through them and, and, and see what the issues are. But this is and awesome. So I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and the, the nice thing is that it, it's right within the context of my IDE, right? So I can just go ahead for any of them and, and see what the issue is. And I can hover over it. And I can, I can go and, and see what exactly is the issue, like this one. Uh, string parameter has no maximum length. Okay, so basically I have a parameter, but I'm not defining what the, what the maximum length is, so I'm potentially opening myself up uh, to someone and sending me something unexpected. So I can, again, just start typing, and you can see that I'm, I'm, getting, um, I'm getting some um, IntelliSense and then help right within the IDE. Awesome. So to me, this is super cool because as I'm writing my code and as I'm writing my API, I can build security into my application as I'm writing this, right? Exactly, exactly. That's exactly the case, right? So, and it's it's not just again not just parameters like in this particular case. It's things that are that are harder, like uh, like the the security section, like the way that I would use auth or open AD connect. Uh, it's very hard to uh, to be. Uh, to make sure that you're following the latest industry best practices, like grant types and, and all of that. Uh, it all is changing, security landscape is changing. So being able to get that help mm -hmm. right within the context of I, your IDE and being able to just go ahead and read the description of each issue, examples, possible exploit scenarios, the way you can remediate, etc. It's basically stack overflow, but, right, but security focused and right within your IDE. Yeah, that is great. So now, of course, I'm a DevOps person, right? So I talk about CI/CD all the time. 
is there a way for me to get all of this security checking and scanning and goodness into my CI CD pipeline? Yeah, so that's that's a great uh, obviously a great question, right? So because I can I can get all those fixes done within my IDE, but as a company, how do I make sure that this is happening uh, consistently across right. my whole development team, right? And so the, the answer to that is is DevOps, right? Mm -hmm. And and so hence the the pipelines, right? If I'm using Azure pipelines mm -hmm. or GitHub Actions, because you cannot just rely on each and every developer following the best practices uh, within the IDE. You want to enforce your rules uh, and your security requirements across your whole team. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a pipeline like Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, you would want these checks to be embedded in the pipeline. And for that, mm -hmm. uh, for that, we've created, again, an extension uh, to Azure DevOps. So I can go into my pipeline. If you let me delete it and, and just re-edit. Uh, find the, the Ford to Crunch EPA security uh, mm -hmm. contract audit. Uh, there is a token that I've embedded in my variable. Uh, so it, it allows uh, my pipeline to talk to the to the uh, Ford to Crunch platform. And I can just uh, um, add this task. Mm -hmm. uh, the task uh, uh, allows me to define minimal security score, which I set mm -hmm. as a threshold. And I can obviously add other uh, parameters to make it more flexible and say that these are issues that are okay for me to ignore, these are issues that are really critical, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. And I can also uh, define rules for, for my reports, for example, take some variables like repository name and branch name and so on. So this is really cool because now within your CI CD pipeline, you're able to scan the code and, and make sure all my APIs are following best practices or whatever rules my company has come up with, right? Exactly. That's exactly the case. So now if I go and, and see my pipeline in action, I can see that it will, um, once it starts, uh, it will uh, get to that um, API security audit, which is basically your, your static analysis. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it will discover all the APIs, all the open API files that I have. And for all of them, uh, it will perform the security audit. Mm -hmm. and it will see if there are any blocking issues found. And in this particular case, there were no issues. So it would just, just let things through. But if I submit my, submit my new API, let me do that. Uh, you remember it, it wasn't a very secure one. So mm -hmm. this one should definitely fail. Let me save and commit. A new API. I'll send it to the cloud. And now we should, if we go back to our pipeline, yeah, here, here's my new API. So now the pipeline automatically runs and it will, again, I didn't have to do anything, right? The, the task and the pipeline are smart enough to detect the change, detect that there's a new API that has been added. And uh, it will perform, again, security review for all three of them. And you can see that now it, it failed uh, because my two old APIs were good, but the new API has a low score, and I can just follow the link yeah. and, and see the details, right? So I can essentially see that same, same report, and now I can see that, yes, it failed, and here my highest priority issues, uh, I, my security section for this API has not been defined, right? So I'm, I'm trying to sneak in an API for which I didn't even define authentication. <laughs> cool. and, and so it tells me exactly what wrong, what, what's wrong and what, which issues are the highest priority ones and how to fix them. Cool. That is cool stuff. All right. I have one more question, though. Um, all of this looks amazing. And of course, you know, today Kubernetes is super, super hot, right? Everybody is running their APIs inside of Kubernetes clusters. What can 42 Crunch help me with, with uh, when I start deploying my APIs into Kubernetes? Cool. So for that, let me quickly fix the definition so I, de uh, so I can indeed deploy it to Kubernetes, mm -hmm. but deploy it in a nice, nice way. So I've, uh, I've, I've, I went ahead, I fixed the definitions, 
uh, of the API. So now it's uh, fix the API. So now I'm, I'm a good citizen. Yes. And so I will push it in. And now my pipeline will, will run and it, it will push there. So it's, it's okay. And I can actually show you that it is good now, right? So mm -hmm. I, I have a much better score now. Yeah. So now when that pipeline, pipeline will run, it will push the updated uh, API into Kubernetes. Cool. And it will push not just the, uh, it will push two things. So it will push the uh, mm -hmm. API itself, uh, the implementation, the microservice, but it will also push the updated definition of the API, the contract. And the way that I have my Kubernetes running is that it has uh, API micro firewall from 42 Crunch uh, deployed uh, to Azure Kubernetes service, to AKS. Mm -hmm. together with that microservice. So basically I have the microservice and I have the API firewall, micro firewall as a sidecar proxy with it. Mm -hmm. And so if I try to invoke that API, uh, so let me quickly show you the, the API platform. In the API platform, I can see that for this microservice, I have a deployment in Azure mm -hmm. and it's, it's running, it's active. And now if I go to Postman and I try to invoke that API and I'll try to send something that it doesn't expect, like I'll try to send a different, uh, different, uh, different verb, or mm. I'll try to send some, a different path. Or if I try to send uh, uh, something that, that's again, that's unexpected, like I'll, I'll try to send parameter that is out of scope, Mm -hmm. uh, these all, they don't even reach my, my backend service. They all get blocked by that protection because it knows what the API is expecting. Cool. So whatever, I, uh, whatever I try as an attacker, if I try to sneak in uh, my email address uh, in, in some, some shape, shape or form, like uh, that the system expects my proper domain but I'll try to sneak in my email address before that or, or, or send some other attacks. They all get blocked. And all of these get also captured. So if I go and, and try to look them up in, my, um, in the platform, if I go to my transaction logs, yeah. I can see all of these attempts uh, that all of them can be blocked. And I look up any of them and I can see why exactly it got blocked, what happened. Only my API is more secure by design now. I have my person running inside uh, Azure Kubernetes protecting my microservice. Wow, this is really, really awesome stuff. Now, traditionally, we used to bolt on security at the end of a software project through months and months of security audits. And now, no one has the time to do that anymore. So we have to shift left and build security into our REST APIs as we write them and as we go through our CI CD pipelines. So all you devs out there, to learn more about REST API security in 42 Crunch, go ahead, click on the links below and join us next time on the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.